two team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and today these baltimore ravens they had a presser that featured john harbaugh lamar jackson calais campbell marlon humphrey i'm not sure if they threw any other bonuses in there because after lamar jackson said his piece at the presser that's when i turned it off and i said oh i gotta go talk to team keep it clean about this one but anyway so i might go check out the other pieces later probably probably not who knows but anyway Lamar Jackson in this press, some things that I noticed was that his negotiations, both private and public, are continuing. And he showed the Ravens, he said, hey, I'm giving y'all one last chance. I I'm giving y'all one last chance. I want y'all to make another push so we can get this done or else, hey, he gave them an official public official deadline so it's not any like misconceptions. Nothing can get misconstrued. No, he gave them an actual date publicly at least. And let it be known. Um, but also some other things that I noticed by Lamar Jackson. Um, something that we've already noticed before. But just the continued leadership. Um, and the continued honor and respect that he shows. Uh, and continues to show for his teammates. But we'll talk about all of that stuff. So first. Uh, he started off by saying that. Because he was asked of course about the contract from the jump. I mean you know that's the topic of conversation. That's what everybody want to talk about. What, what's up with the contract Lamar? And he said that they are still talking, but that he'll probably cut it off after this week. So when he said that, I was like, oh, yeah, th that's him giving them one last shot at this thing. Like, hey, it's Wednesday. Y'all got two days, two days. And if you can come up with something really nice, maybe I'll give you a third. But y'all got two days to get this thing right. And hey, after that, we won't talk no more. Now, just so nobody thinks it's anything crazy, I don't believe that just because they if they don't come to a contract agreement, I don't think there will be any like bad blood or anything like that, because a word that Lamar continued to use throughout this presser was business It's business conducting business. So he understands it. He knows it. So I don't think just if for some reason that they don't come that they can't come to a contract agreement before the deadline. And he plays throughout this year. I don't think it's going to be any bad blood. Are he going to be throwing footballs like, man, I can't stand these Ravens. Oh, I'm going to throw a touchdown anyway. I don't think it ain't going to be nothing like that. But anyway, Lamar Jackson also talked about, because um, somebody asked him about injuries. He said ain't thinking about no injuries. He don't even want to put it out there. Um, and he also said the process has been business as far as him handling his own contract. Uh, and then that's where, after that, that's where he mentioned that Friday is his deadline. He said, Friday is the deadline. That's, he said, I'm giving them to the end of the week. And somebody's like, end of the week? Like, when is the end of the week? It's like before the game, during the game? During the... No, he said, Friday. That's the deadline. Um, he uh, said that he is comfortable handling his own contract talk. Um, and he was also asked if he feels like it's a risk going into the season uh, without a contract. And that has been a question that has been talked about a lot amongst the uh, analysts, commentators, media, whatever, that Lamar is essentially risking a lot by stepping on a football field without a deal. And he said that it was a risk two years ago. And he said that last year it was a risk too. But he said, hey, he's just playing football. He's just playing football. So he's not really worried about all that other stuff. Um, then he was asked again uh, about representing himself. And his initial response was funny because he was like, he said, y'all still asking me about representing myself? But then he was like, oh, no, no, I'm just playing. I don't think he was just playing. I, I think that um, along with the contract, too, because there was even a point where Lamar was like, no, it ain't no more contract. And somebody off to the side, too, the person that was, that was handling the, uh, the presser, they were like, no, no more questions about the contract. He ain't answering no more contract questions. So they were, they were past that. They were ready to move on from that. But then Lamar himself, he was ready to move on from him representing himself. Because it just, it just sounded to me like he, he was just over it. He was over that conversation, over that being brought up. Um, but anyway, somebody else asked if the, him and the Ravens were pretty close to coming to an agreement on a deal. And he said, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And I love that because you saying, I don't know, that doesn't give anything to anybody. It gives no, nobody nothing. Because you could be like, oh, yeah, we're getting close, but no, no, no. You could be like, oh, no, we're far apart. No, no. I don't know. So that, that keeps everything super, super uh, private. <clears throat> um, he said uh, he has no clue how close him and the Ravens are when it comes to agreeing on a contract. And he said that you got to ask the guy who I'm talking to. That, of course, being Mr. 
Eric DaCosta. And maybe Steve Bashad, but Mr. Eric DaCosta would be the primary guy. Um, he talked about how it's not him versus Joe Flacco, that is him versus the Jets defense. And I mean, that's well, that's true. It's always more fun to say the quarterback versus the quarterback because, you know, I mean, that is one thing with, that media does that I actually appreciate and enjoy because it's like the, the two are going to, they're not going to get, they're not on the field going against each other one-on-one, -on -one, nothing like that, but yeah, they're going against each other's defense, but it's more fun to say the quarterback versus the quarterback. But anyway, we, we, we know that technically it's the quarterback versus the opponent's defense and so on and so forth. Um, he brought up about the team not peaking too soon, and he mentioned that a couple of times too. He kept, he, he reiterated that. So that's something that obviously is important to him. Um, this was one of my favorite uh, not questions, but more so responses uh, from Lamar in this presser for everything that wasn't about the contract. Somebody asked him if he could pick one guy on the team to have a breakout season besides himself, who would it be? And you would think like, man, who is it? Lamar could probably say like Rashad Bateman. That, that could probably be an easy answer for him. Rashad Bateman, maybe he might bring up James Prochet. Maybe he might bring up Isaiah Likely. A lot of different options that he could bring up, especially since he's a quarterback and he's going to be the one throwing him the ball. He's on offense. So one would think that it would be an offensive player, but no. His answer was, he said Ravens offense, Ravens defense, and Ravens special teams because they're hungry and they didn't like how last season ended. Now, what I appreciated about that answer was that um, him, like we mentioned, he is obviously an offensive player. He's a quarterback. So he was like, you know what? I'm not gonna single out one person on my team because it could go too, it could go a lot of it could go a lot of different ways. Some positive, but a lot of negative. Because say for instance, he's like, all right, who who do you think is gonna break out on this team, Lamar? Rashad Bateman. If he answered Rashad Bateman, nothing wrong with that answer. And that's a lot of people's expectation that Rashad Bateman is gonna break out. But if Lamar, as the leader of this team, and you know a lot of people are looking up to him. He says Rashad Bateman, somebody could be like, hey, well, what about me? I, I think I'm primed for a big year. And somebody could keep that in their mind the entire year and be like, oh, Lamar, that's why he throwing him so many passes. Because he said he, he was going to break out. Oh, he favors him more, more, more over me. And that, that could cause somebody to just really start festering up some just bad blood on, on the inside. And then in turn, that could reflect on the outside. Another thing it could do, too, if he would have singled out one person. It could put a lot of na national pressure on that person. People could be like, oh, Lamar said this person was going to break out. Okay, all eyes on them. Even though, I mean, in, it's NFL, so all eyes are on them already. But still, they could be like, oh, Lamar said this person probably going to break out. So let's watch them extra close. And if they ever, for some reason, they disappoint, people could look back at this and be like, oh, man. Lamar, that, that's who you thought was going to break out? Oh, they, they let us down. But it, it just, I really appreciated the answer because he put everybody up. Instead of just propping up one person and giving them their shine or whatever, he gave everybody their shine. And I, I, I really loved that. Um, he also, uh, they, he was asked about Joe Flacco uh, the year that they were doing the switch and stuff. Um, and he asked, he was asked if it was any awkwardness, anything like that between the two. And he said, no. He said, Joe Flacco is not awkward, not petty or anything like that. He said, Joe Flacco was always professional. He said when they were in the meeting room, he had a question. Joe Flacco would answer right away. Um, he also uh, was asked, and this was a good question, too. He was asked if he thinks the uh, not playing in the preseason for the first time in his career, if that will affect him. And he said no. Uh, he mentioned Tyler Linderbaum uh, being a fast, smart center and that he catches on pretty quickly. And then this, this part right here. This part, uh, because he was asked about Tyler Linderbaum specifically. But with this next question. He was asked uh, how he feels about Ronnie Stanley being close to being back. And, and this answer, I loved it because he said that Ronnie being close to being back is great. But he also said he, he gave an endorsement to Jawan James. And he was like, but Jawan James is looking good. Something like that. So I was like, man, um, that does a lot for Jawan James. Because Jawan James is expected to step in in Ronnie Stanley's absence. Um, if Ronnie Stanley can't go week one, I'm not expecting him week one, but we'll see. But Jawan James is expected to be the left tackle. So with Ronnie Stanley having been out for as long as he's been out and Jawan James filling the role, there's a lot of pressure on Jawan James. A whole lot of pressure because the Ravens have been through some different left tackles in Ronnie Stanley's absence. Um, but for Lamar to be like, hey, yeah, 
I'm 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 about to get my guy back soon. Oh yeah, that's great. But then he's still like, oh, but no. But Jawan James, he's been looking real good. The the way that he handled a lot of these questions just it, it continues to show the maturity level of one Lamar Jackson. Um, and it continues to show how great of a teammate he is to his teammates and that he really does actually care about them. And he is really down for them like that. So I, I just appreciated that. And then one last thing he said, because uh, they asked him about J.K. Dobbins, and he was like, hopefully J.K. will be out there in a, in a couple of weeks. Now, when he said that, I was thinking, ooh, hold up now. Wait a minute, Lamar. Did you just drop something that, I don't know, because... That made it sound like J.K. wasn't ready to go all the way yet. It, 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 it almost sounded like he was, almost wasn't ready to play. But we'll have that question answered uh, in a couple of days. Um, yeah, because the Ravens, yeah, that uh, we're going to find out who's uh, playing. Well, come Sunday, like an hour and a half before the game. You know, the actors and actors, all that. But we'll see. But, I mean, J.K., even if he does play, he's expected to be eased back in. It's not going to be, all right, full workload, J.K., there you go. So, that was cool. Um, Harbaugh, he spoke before Lamar, um, and he said that it'll be nice to say hello to Flacco before the game, but after that, nah. He said after that, they got to defend his offense, and he said that they have to be at their best because he knows what Joe Flacco is capable of, obviously. Um, and he was also asked about the transition year from Joe Flacco to, to Lamar. He said that they both handled it great. He said Lamar was excited to learn from Joe and, wanted, and really wanted to learn from him, and he said that Joe was supportive of Lamar the whole way. And even in a playoff game, he said that Joe Flacco wanted Lamar Jackson to stay in. And I, I, I really think that that playoff game, that was so important. And that was so crucial for Lamar Jackson and his future with the Baltimore Ravens. And I know a lot of people may disagree, but I was glad that they, let, they left Lamar Jackson out there in the playoff game. I said it back then and I still say it now. Obviously, Joe Flacco had plenty of playoff experience. Joe Flacco might have he might have came in and saved the day, or he might have came in and still lost. Who knows? We'll never know. But if they would have yanked Lamar Jackson from that game, that would have showed Lamar Jackson like, "Hey, rookie, we drafted you in the first round, but no, nah, we not sold on you. We ain't riding with you like that." Oh, you you helped get you, you which you led us to what a seven and one record down the stretch. It was a six and one, whatever it was. Uh, mm, no, nah, we straight. We ain't worried about none of that. Flacco, get in there. Lamar, we don't believe in you. That's what that would have showed him. And that would have showed everybody else that too. So the fact that they left him in the game, that was so important for his future. And I'm glad that they did it. It was ugly. It was definitely ugly. Even though to the end, it got a, little, it got a lot better. But um, it, yeah, it, it, that was a good move. And I think that that was the right move. Uh, but anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. We'll see if the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, if they can beat this deadline or if they reach it. And it's like, hey, well, we, we just couldn't make it happen. Uh, but either way, it's going to be a fun season. It's going to be a uh, just a lot going on this season, as you all already know. Um, but hopefully it doesn't end with Lamar Jackson after this year being 